Hi Jay, uh, Hi. upstairs again on AFU today. Um, lots of patients with sepsis being emitted on the so on so-called sepsis bundle and I'm just getting a feeling that we might be overdoing it a little bit with some of these patients. They're really old and frail and they're often close to the end of life and I don't know if there's anything we, different we can do about apart from applying this sepsis bundle which seems to be a one-size-fits-all solution. Any thoughts? It, it is a really challenging thing because mm. of course um, the problem in, in older people is that sepsis can present non-specifically just like so many other things mm. uh, and I've been observing that we have been um, not really mindful of some, how to really understand those criteria apply differently for, for example you know I'm certainly not seeing all older people with their temperature being managed uh, differently because unlike children where a lot of temperature is due to viral infections 90% of people with fever in the 65 plus age group actually have bacterial infection so even if they don't have an obvious focus it's perfectly reasonable to treat them with, uh, yeah, with an antibiotic. Yeah we're getting a lot of people chucked upstairs on meropenem or whatever without an obvious source of infection and we kind of think well why couldn't we just wait for a bit and get the cultures back you know what's the rush they're physiologically stable if they have a fever, I think that's a perfect reasonable thing to do. Yeah. Because if they were a fever, they would have 90% chance of being a serious bacterial infection, which is occult. Yeah. And that is okay. If they don't have a fever, then I can understand not necessarily going down that particular pathway. I also have a feeling we're not taking account of chronic physiology when we are putting in the criteria. Mm -hmm. For example, you know, a raised respiratory rate or a poor saturation uh, 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 could all be absolutely normal. Yeah, because often they have beta blockers or they've got systolic hypertension or whatever. Yeah. Poor peripheral circulation yeah. causing low saturations. We're not necessarily applying those criteria. My other concern is uh, the labeling of urine tract infection. Uh, because we are not, not necessarily you know, looking at, at the right sensitivity and specificity of the yeah. different tests that we're using yeah, for we've the people. We've talked about that before, but just, yes. so you think you're comfortable with the sepsis pathway and the way it's being implemented at the moment? So, so I think my concern is that it is not, I think I'm comfortable with the pathway. Yeah. I think the issue is the way people are implementing it. Uh, and I think we are doing, uh, going wrong on both counts. So we are missing sepsis and not treating them. And we're treating people as sepsis who don't have sepsis. So what do you think I, would help? If I were the to make it, or even if, if I were to make it very simple, yeah. I would say any older person with a fever treat a sepsis. Mm -hmm. That would be a starting point. If they don't have a fever, I would much, and they don't have obvious, you know, septic well, shock from some other yeah. cause, yeah. Yeah. then I would probably say treat. But in all the conditions, there's nothing stopping us from from doing supportive symptomatic management while we are waiting. While we wait for some time. While we're waiting. But also bearing in mind for a lot of frail older people, I think it's an academic point and the question really should be, are we going to do sepsis treatment yeah. or not do it because it is not in yeah. the best inter intention. Maybe we should be doing some more advanced care planning. Yes, yes, and, and I think we're not doing enough. Yes, yes we're okay. not doing enough of that. Great, thanks.